This segment is sponsored by Our Home Magazine. Known for its calming effect, lavender continues to be a popular choice, serving many uses in the household. Have you ever wondered how to grow it yourself? Well, Sean Mercer of Lavender Fields Farms joins us with a few tips to grow and more tips of what not to do. Is that right, Sean? Yeah, the growing side of it is not terribly difficult. It's finding the right spot for it, enjoying full sun, well-drained soil, which we don't have in Virginia, and uh, high humidity. So anything you can get <laughs> Anything you can have it drain is a good idea. And so I'm, I'm listening to you there, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. We've got red clay. We've got hot sun. <laughs> and this sounds like, no, you can't grow lavender in that. But uh, obviously, you have found a way to make it work. So let's go through some of the things to do uh, that you can do and make it work, because obviously you have. Yeah, so, I mean, the drainage side of it, it goes, it gets so big, there's really no need to amend too far down. It's really just raising it up and having it all drain away from the crown of the plant and then keeping the plant nice and shaped. I have one here. You kind of, you want to trim it and shape it like a ball once a year. And that kind of tidies it up as a nice ball, kind of low shrub is really what you're after. That'll hold the snow and then uh, on the drying outside, Bill, just not watering the foliage. You can do some decorative rock around it, which tidies it up and really bakes it. It loves, loves, loves sunlight. It's just the humidity. And like you said, we have the trifecta of the humidity up and down winters and clay soil. So usually you plant it around and kind of see where it works and go from there. Yeah. And you do not plant it in a hole. You plant it in a mound. Uh, is yeah. another thing to learn there. And it's like, if you know these things, and and I love that, you kind of slipped that in there and it went by real quick. Try it in a couple of spots, see which one works best and then work with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, it's we're not trying to promote buying more plants than you need to, but it's really the cheapest and easiest way is to kind of plant it around the yard, see where it likes it and just go from there as opposed to having to have it right where you want it. Once you put it in, you say, do not water again. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we don't water through the summer, really, and about 90% of what we plant in the spring survives through the summer into the fall untouched. And uh, it averages about 30 inches of rain here, and it's happy with 10 a year. So really no need to do extra work on top of what you're already doing. All right, now I know what to plant. <laughs> it needs no watering. Wow. So after it's in, that's it's good to go. And if it does well in that spot, that's the spot. So we've learned that. And you don't, not only do you not water it, you don't fertilize it? Yeah, no fertilizing. The only real long-term care is the start of September. You'll take the top third of the green foliage, so the stem length, and then you'll take the top third and that's really it. You shape it like a ball. You kind of give it that nice shape for winter. It looks like it's kept. It reduces that size for that season and helps you get through. And then it just blooms again the next year for you. We're talking with Sean about lavender and how to grow it and what not to do. One of the other things uh, not to do is uh, kind of crowd it a little bit because it does spread, correct? Yeah, it just doesn't play well with anything else. You can plant things around it, but no shading, no encroaching on it. Because of the humidity we have here, airflow through the actual plant is very, very important. So kind of not crowding it out and knowing it's going to eventually end up about four to five feet around, about two and a half feet tall. Wow. And how do we know when to harvest it? So unfortunately, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You harvest it at the very peak of the bloom at the beginning if you're after preserving the color for a dried bunch, let's say. If you're after it, <clears throat> pardon me, for crafting and so forth, you can leave it on a little longer and kind of have it towards the end of June and take it off. The oil is in the plant. So the longer you leave the bloom out there and enjoy that, the more oil is dissipated and the grayer or drier it looks as you kind of roll through the season. All right. Great advice, uh, Sean. And then folks have never been out to Lavender Fields, it is a treat to go out and uh, just look at. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Sean. Thanks for having me on, Bill. You have a great day. All right. Lavender Fields Farm is located 11,300 Winfrey Road in Glen Allen. For more information, visit their website, lavenderfieldsfarm.com.
www.newstandsnow.com. Learn more in the current issue of Our Home Magazine, which is on Newsstands Now. Please stay with us. There's more Virginia This Morning coming right up.